Shalom. Um, a little change of atmosphere. The boat's behind me. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about is something that has came to my attention. Uh, this Rabbi Kaduri prophecy that a lot of people are talking about and about what he said. Um, we know that he put in writing that he knew the name of the Messiah, the Mashiach. And he wrote it in an anagram, and that name was Yehoshua, which is the Hebrew name for Jesus. He said he is the Messiah. He's the one that we're looking for. Now he, he put this in a note, and he said that he'd been coming to him for over a year in dreams and visions, and that um, it wasn't to be revealed until one year after his death. And then it came to the part about Ariel Sharon's death, and he said that the uh, Messiah would return shortly after Ariel Sharon passes away. And the controversy comes because there's so many people that are looking at him and they're saying, well, this guy was a Kabbalist, and he was all these things, and you were a drunk at one time, or you were an adulterer, or you were something worse, maybe you were a murderer or whatever, and the Lord saved you. Are you still that? Okay. When I, I found the exact words that he said. It was in Irut Shiva, and they had a reporter there, and the guy said, oh, he went into what, I, what appeared to me to be a Kabbalist trance or whatever, and then he was in it for 45 minutes, and the students thought he was having an having a episode, maybe a stroke or something, but he was actually praying. He couldn't be disturbed, and then when he came out of this, it was like he was saying he was, he was doing the Shema prayer. And he was at a yeshiva, which is a school for students. And he came out of it, and this is what Kaduri said, his exact quotes. He said, With the help of God, the soul of the Mashiach has, been attached, has attached itself to a person in Israel. And he was saying that in preparation for what was going to happen. You see, when we in, in America, we talk about being saved and being converted, we say that Jesus or Yeshua came into our hearts and indwelt in us. His Spirit came into us and indwelt in us through the Rahu Kodesh or through the Holy Spirit. He came into us and indwelt us so that it is no longer us but Him. That's what He's saying right here, I believe. I believe He's saying that the, the Messiah came into a person in Israel and then dwelt him. And then he was saying that so that when he died and he left this note behind, given his name, you would know that Yeshua was in his heart, in the heart of Kaduri. And we know that the uh, uh, Matthew and a few other people have run, been running some Bible codes and they said that when uh, the rapture occurs that Kaduri's grave is empty or his tomb. So. That would be a sign to Israel, to all those that believe. He had over 200,000 people come to his funeral. And uh, we know there's a lot of, he was one of the head rabbis in Israel. So he couldn't just come out and say it. He's not an American. So he's not going to say it the same way. Just like in England, the hose is a hose bib. And then you have in America, it's just a faucet. So there's a translation thing there. And he, and he didn't, he couldn't talk to other Christians about his Christianity, his conversion, that he was a Messianic Jew now. He couldn't, con he couldn't talk to anybody. So he said it the best way he could. He said this, Messiah, the, the, the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua, Yehoshua, came inside and attached himself to the soul of a man in Israel. He was referring to himself, not to the Antichrist. Now the Jews, afterwards, when they're looking for the Antichrist and they see his tomb is empty, when they see the tomb of Kaduri is empty, they say, well, he said he's going to come shortly after that. Well, let's look for him. So then they may see him and, and attribute that statement to whatever it is that allows the Antichrist to become ruler of that region. Maybe that's what happens. But I believe that Kaduri was a Christian man, a righteous man through the blood of the Lamb. That's what I believe he was saying. If you look at his, no one can say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he's the Savior, that he's the Messiah, without it being revealed to them by the Holy Spirit. 
Satan cannot stand against his own house. So Kaduri can't be a Kabbalist and be saying these things that Jesus is the Messiah. He can't say that. According to the Word of God, we have to rightly divide the Word of Truth. We have to look at what the Scriptures say, and we have to uh, know that there is no Scripture of private interpretation. That means you can't take something and twist it around to mean something that nobody else believes. And that's not consistent with God's Word, because God's Word is consistent. God never lies. Every single prophecy that's in that Bible has happened or is going to happen. They just found another one of King David's palaces to prove that King David wasn't a conglomeration of a bunch of men, but he was an actual true living soul that lived in Israel and ruled over the land, and that Israel owned that land before there was any Palestinians, before there was any of these other people. That is God's gift to them. That was their land. They were forced out, just like America forced the Indians out of America. And some of those Indians... The Cherokees, they had Jewish blood. That can be traced back. There's Hebrew writing in those hills, and, Amer and America attacked them and forced them on the trail of, of tears. So we have to think about these things. That man was converted. He didn't know how to say it like we do, but he was converted. I believe that's what he was saying. He was saying the Ma Messiah has attached himself to my soul. And now, him as a leading rabbi, I am going to reveal to you the name of the Messiah, the Mashiach. His name is Yehoshua, the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God that died. That's the only one that's in their history that died on a cross, that died for them. That's him. How can he be the Antichrist? He can't be the Antichrist, see? Now, that may be used, like I said, in the future. When the tombs are empty, because in the Old Testament it says that the that the uh, there'll be a resurrection. See, and so maybe they're going to look for that, and then they're going to see something in it that's not in it. But that man Kaduri, I believe, was a righteous man through the blood of the Lamb. I believe he was a Christian. He was a Messianic Christian, and he released the name of Jesus. You cannot say that name or say he is the Messiah unless you have been converted, especially. If you're a Jew and you're an Orthodox Jew who believes what those laws are. And he was even further than that because he was into the cabal stuff where they use divination. And talking about divination, King David and those guys used the Urim and Thummim. So did the priest. There was pockets on there. And there was a gar priestly garment and that had one stone for every tribe of Israel. And they'd go into the temple and they'd say, ask God for an answer. And one of those stones would light up and tell them what to do. Were they using divination? Don't you judge God and His laws and what He's doing. With your little puny little mind, you guys that are out there doing that. And then those who think they're Jews who are not Jews, you better be careful because the Scripture also talks about them where Jesus comes back and says in Revelation about to judge those who say they are Jews but they are not. Hmm, would He be talking about all these people in America who say, I'm a Jew, well I'm part of the 144,000, or I'm a woman and I'm going to do all this Jewish stuff. You're not even allowed to do any of that according to the law. But yet you think you're under the law. That's nonsense. Christ came. His blood is the only thing that atones. The whole thing with this religious stuff where they did the feast and all that, that was the same thing as circumcision. Circumcision was so that whenever a man was using the restroom, he would look down and see in his flesh the covenant between him and God, between Abraham and God and all of his descendants. It was a reminder because God knows men... We fall. We make mistakes. We forget who we are, and the devil tricks us, see? And so he wanted a reminder in those men's flesh. The covenant was to Abraham and his son. To them first, the women were following that. Oh, yeah, this is one of those feminist things. The Bible's that way. God was a man. He was in the image of a man. That's why we look like him. The woman was created second. There's a pecking order in this whole thing, and this God's kingdom. He does whatever he wants. He says he chooses who will go in and who will not. I love Jacob and hated Esau. Before they were ever born, he said he did that. 
We have to realize he is God. We're not God. We're, who are you judging him about what he's doing with his precepts? That law was there so that every day in their lives, whether they were farmers or they were raising cattle or they were raising grapes or whatever it was, the mitzvahs were there, the 613, so that they could be reminded every day as they put their shoes on and went to work that they were serving the Almighty God. That's the only reason for the law, to keep you in remembrance. Look at the book of Kings, how this one king rose up and he did right inside the law the Lord and then all of a sudden his son came along and did wrong and then God had to judge him. That's because they weren't they weren't keep they couldn't keep that law. And those men were falling. God is trying to show you we are subject to falling and making mistakes. And so that law was there to try to keep you in an attitude of, of servitude towards God and worship of Him so that you wouldn't sin against Him because that's the ultimate thing. He doesn't want you to sin. He doesn't want any of us to. His Son's blood came to cover us for that, to make up for that law so that you He could be inside of you. Christ could be in you and that's what Kaduri was saying. This soul of Him, the Messiah, has came inside of me and attached itself to me. Just like you tell your friends, if you're a good Christian, hey, the Lord Jesus lives inside of my heart. And I am telling you about the good news of the gospel that he came to save you from your sins. That's all the law it was for, was to point you to Christ, to show you. Those men had to have that to live their daily lives when they were harvesting the grapes. Well, the feast is coming up. we got to remember about this, to serve the Lord and not sin. Do you see that? It's so simple. God is love. He's made a way out of it for us. He showed you all the way through. This is Him teaching you just like if you were in kindergarten and then you went to first grade and second grade and third grade and then now you're in college. You see, He's trying to teach you something about His love for you, that He loved you so much that He sent His own Son to die for you so that you don't have to be involved in that law. Shall we sin? No, I'm not saying that we should sin, but I'm saying read Romans and read Hebrews where he's talking to the Hebrews about what they're doing and how they're uh, trying to reinstitute the law and use part of the law to be it's sanctified only through in the their grace own of God that any of us, through this thing that he did, he chose us, we did not choose him, and then it's him that's going to complete this in us. That's what his word says. Have faith. Don't be like the Israelites and stand outside the mountain because it's on smoke and go, Oh, I'm afraid. I don't want to go up and look him in the face and see him and get the word. So then he takes you from being a priest, a nation of priests to just a bunch of people that are ruled by priests. Seek the Lord yourself. He's in the word. Worship him. Love him with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Is he first in your life? That's what he wants to know. Am I first? Are you putting your shoes on according to the law? Are you going to work according to the law? Are you worshiping me on the Sabbath according to the law? Do you love me? That's what he wants to know. That is what Almighty God wants to know. I ask Lord Jesus, Yeshua, that you would reveal this to those that their hearts are given, that you'd bless them, and that the Holy Spirit would dwell with them, that you'd heal their infirmities, that you'd touch their loved ones, God, and that you'd give them a peace, knowing that it is you that chooses who goes into your kingdom, and not the person. God is the one who looks down through history and sees who will be carry his standard, his bear his flag into the battle. It is him who sees that, and then he comes back through time and, and allows us and helps us to make it. God, I ask that you undertake for these people and that you bless them and that you let them know that you are coming soon, even as your word has said so, that you give them the faith to believe in your son. And we ask it in your son's name, in the name of Yeshua. We ask that you bless these people and that you fill them with the Holy Spirit and with, with your love and with your peace and with your grace and that you keep these brothers from fighting each other. In his name we ask it, in Jesus' name, in the name of Yeshua. Amen.